Hey guys, welcome to the channel, as you see in the thumbnail what if, Issei had wolf powers instead of Drake part 1. Before I start, please do support for more awesome content, and subscribe my channel and like this video. Go support and follow the BLUEDOG1029 for writing that awesome fanfic, and also make sure to comment on this story, link in the description. Let's start this video. Mom, Dad hurry the lake's right over here. Issei is currently 7 years old and with his family on their annual camping trip deep in Kuo Forest. Okay honey hold on I can't keep up with you anymore like I used to say Issei's mother. When they got there they were in awe of the serene side of the lake. Little did they know they were being watched as they set up camp. Later that night. Issei's father thought it would be a good idea to go for a midnight hike and go stargazing. As they were walking they heard rustling in the bushes. Hey mom, dad did you hear that? Says Issei. Hear what Issei? Asks Issei's father. SHHH listen oh I guess it was nothing Issei says. So they kept hiking to their destination. 30 minutes later when they arrive at the clearing they were hiking to. Alright it should be just up ahead Issei. Why don't you go up ahead and find us a good spot to watch the stars from? Issei's father says while trying to catch his breath. Alright but don't take too long otherwise I'll get bored. Issei yells. As Issei is running he notices a strange smell but ignores it as he wants to get to the clearing. As he gets there he doesn't look around, he just stands there in awe of the sight of the stars and moon. After a minute he noticed the smell but much stronger now and heard somebody talking to him. Hey boy what are you doing here shouldn't you be with your parents? Says the woman. Issei stops and looks around to see dozens of mutilated bodies on the ground. He starts to back away when he sees it, the women are whatever you call that monster. The top half was a beautiful woman, but the bottom half was that of a spider. Ah. Issei screams as he starts to run away. Oh well guess you saw my food the woman says a little disappointed. What does Issei? His parents yell in unison. Run it, it's a monster. Issei exclaims looking back at the woman. His parents saw the woman and bodies and immediately grabbed Issei and started running. As they noticed they couldn't outrun the woman they stopped and turned around with Issei behind them both. What do you want? His father asks worriedly. Me? Oh I just want you and your family to add to my meal for the day fresh meat sounds pretty good right now. The woman sadistically exclaims to the worried family. Please leave my son and wife out of this. I'll let you take me, just let them go, Issei's father begged. And that's a good deal as it's the easy way, but I don't think so. It tastes better when my prey tries to escape. And then that face oh that face when you catch them and they know nothing they can do can help them, and they know it's futile. It's just orgasmic seeing that face. What if you take my husband and me? And just let my son go. His mother says begging so her child could survive. A fine the woman says and Issei's parents looked a little more relieved. Not. The woman exclaims evilly. Utter fear appeared on Issei's parents' faces. As a last resort his father takes his gun out that he keeps for protection against wild animals and shoots the woman right between the eyes which would normally kill a normal human. The woman's head slung backward as if she was dead, but no, she brought her head back and said oh now you just had to do that, now I'll make your deaths very long and painful now. Issei heard his dad yell at his mom. Run. Take Issei and run. As his mother and Issei were running they heard gunshots and his father screaming in agony. Issei was about to look back when he heard his mother tell him Issei, I want you to know your father, and I love you very, very much, now I want you to run as fast as you can back to the city, and don't look back just run and run, until you get to safety you hear me. As his mother said this, Issei started to cry. But why? Why can't we go together? I don't want to be alone. Issei barely says while crying profusely. Oh what a beautiful sight of a mother and father throwing away their lives for their child. Too bad your son is going to die too. It's been a while since I've eaten a child. They taste divine in my opinion. The woman says to the mother and child. No. Please, please let my child go. I'll do anything you ask. What do you want? I'll get it for you. His mother exclaims in tears. Oh I guess there is something I want that you can get for me. The woman says. His mother's face lights up and asks okay thank you, thank you so much. What do you want? I'll get it right now. It was silent for a minute while it seemed like hours. As the woman says this Issei's mother's face paled in fear for her child your son. The woman yells. Issei's mother looked back and yelled run. Issei couldn't move as he was frozen in fear until he saw his mother decapitated by the women. As the blood splattered onto Issei he remembered what his mother's dying wish was. Run. Run as fast as you can. Run till you're safe. So he ran faster than he ever ran, but in the end it was futile. He was launched through the air by the woman, he got up as he coughed up blood, but started to run, until his legs were broken one at a time as he screamed in agony, the woman kicked him through the air, again breaking a few ribs this time. Why? Why are you doing this? Issei barely says while coughing up more blood. 
because I'm hungry and it's been a while since I've killed a family. But I must say it was very fun. You probably broke the record for taking the longest to kill. The woman maniacally exclaims. As Issei realized he wouldn't survive he said forgive me mom. I couldn't survive. I'll be seeing you and dad again soon. He says while still crying and coughing up blood. The woman now says well that was fun, but all fun has to end eventually. The woman says as she stabs Issei through the dot Issei coughs up more blood and is about to black out until he hears somebody else speak stray devil visor. Let yourself be captured or suffer the consequences. The new woman says. Issei looked around to see who was talking when he saw a breathtaking woman with silver hair surrounded by soldiers. Then he heard Visor speak again to TSK. I guess I won't be able to taste the boy. What a pity, but it looks like I'm outnumbered, so I'll take my leave now. Visor says as she runs away. After her. The silver-haired woman yells to the soldiers. She was about to follow in the pursuit of Visor, until she heard a cough when she turned around, she saw Issei fatally wounded with a hole in his and broken legs. She walked towards him, her facial expression expressing deep sadness. Who are you? Issei asks while coughing up more blood. Grafia Lucifuge the now named Grafia tells Issei. As she looks at Issei more she starts to tear up. I'm so sorry I didn't make it in time she says tearing up. Don't cry. It isn't your fault Grafia Chan. Please don't cough cough I've seen enough people crying today. And if you cry it's going to make me want to cry even more. Issei says coughing up more blood. Can I call you Fia, Grafia Chan? Issei asks. Yes I would be delighted if you called me that. Grafia exclaims in tears. Hey Fia, can I make a final request if it's not too much? Issei asks Grafia. Sure what is it? Grafia asks Issei. Can you stay and watch the stars with me until I go? I was going to watch them with my parents until that lady showed up. Issei tells her while coughing up more blood and starting to cry again. Sure, I'll wait here as long as you need. Grafia says while drying up her tears. As they watched the stars there was a meteor storm, and they both watched in awe until Issei said thank you Fia, and he breathed his last breath until he was put into an eternal slumber. He's dead if you couldn't tell. As Grafia felt his aura fade she cried once more, then got up to regroup with a stray devil retrieval unit she looked back at Issei one last time, then she flew away. In Issei's mindscape. Issei finally opened his eyes. How where am I? Issei thought to himself. Is this heaven? As he looked around he was in a pasture surrounded by forest, but this wasn't a normal forest, it was dreamlike Issei thought. He was about to look around until he heard snoring coming from a mountain far away. After taking a closer look he realized it was a volcano. But it wasn't a normal one you see on TV it was black with blue fire and lava coming out of it, but Issei felt an urge to go there. So he started walking. After what seemed like hours Issei finally reached the volcano and found where snoring was coming from, a cave in the volcano. Hello. Anyone in here? Asked Issei. But there was no response. He debated going in but in the end what other choice was there? Go look for who knows what and whatever the heck he was. I'm coming in. Yelled Issei skeptically. After about 10 minutes of walking the snoring was unbearably loud until he saw a huge black and blue wolf sleeping on a rock. He started to back away until the urge was back, but this time was urging him to wake the wolf up, he didn't know what to do after about a minute of thinking he finally made up his mind, he would wake the beast up. Issei walked towards the wolf slowly, while the snoring just got louder. When he finally got to the wolf, he wondered how do I wake him up? Poke him. Kick him. But then he felt the wolf move. The wolf opened his eyes, and Issei just stared into the wolf's eyes in fear and curiosity, then Issei realized his eyes were mesmerizing as cold as ice as blue as the ocean, yet there was a fire burning in them. As Issei was standing there mesmerized, the wolf stood up on all fours and was towering over Issei. Then it said Issei. Why are you here so early? You must not be any older than eight. What has happened that has awakened me? Issei was standing there not daring to move a muscle as now, he was more scared than he ever has been before the wolf's aura itself told you not to mess with it, let alone wake it up. Um, I see you cannot speak. I don't blame you. I see so many emotions in your eyes. The wolf told Issei. Hate, sadness, regret, and loss, the wolf told Issei again. What has happened to make you feel these emotions and be so confused? The wolf asked Issei again. Still Issei didn't speak or move an inch. Hum I'm not in the mood to talk. Alright I'm going to use a trick I know to see your memories. Don't worry it won't hurt, the wolf told Issei as he walked towards him. When he was right in front of Issei he pressed his forehead against Issei's, and Issei's vision went blue and relieved every moment of his life, including what just happened a few minutes earlier in a matter of seconds. As the wolf pulled away he saw tears in Issei's eyes, and in the wolf's eyes, you could see sadness for the boy, and anger towards the one who did this to him, as he too just lived Issei's life. After a few minutes of silence the wolf spoke up. Listen Issei do you wish to live again? 
to be able to keep the promise you made with your mother to live. After another minute of silence Isaiah looked and muttered no. What was that? The wolf asked. No. Why would I want to live when there's nobody there for me? My parents died because of me, I don't have any other family, my only friend moved away last summer. There's nobody who would miss me if I was gone. The wolf was first surprised at first by this, then got angry and yelled, are you stupid? Issei looked surprised at what the wolf said. Your parents died for you, they laid down their lives and would do it over and over just for you to live. And your friend who said she isn't going to come back. What if she did and looked for you only to find out you were dead? She would be devastated. The wolf yelled this and made Issei scared, but made him realize what the wolf said was true. Issei then muttered again how would I live? If I'm already dead. The wolf answered it's simple if you want to live, I will revive you with my power. Issei then asked why would you do that? How does it benefit you? The wolf simply answered I am a part of you I sealed myself into something called a sacred gear that the biblical god created for humans to have as weapons against the supernatural, such as devils, angels, and fallen angels. Why would you seal yourself in this thing called a sacred gear if you are so powerful? Issei asked the wolf. I must say you are taking this quite well for a child. But to answer your question it's simple. I got bored. I've been around as long as the biblical god and wanted to see the world from a human perspective. I've also taken a liking to you. But may I ask why do you call me powerful? Issei then told the wolf well I thought you were powerful, your whole aura is powerful. Are you not powerful? The wolf then laughed and said I don't know if I'm strong or weak throughout my whole life. I've never been challenged before. After the wolf calmed down he then asked again so Issei, do you want to live or not? I will not judge you for your answer as it is your life to live not mine. After Issei thought for a minute he answered I will. I will live the life my parents died for. The wolf asked Issei one last thing before I brought you back. I have one request. Issei was surprised as the wolf said he didn't want anything in return. What is your request? The wolf answered in a loud thundering voice. Live your life. Not for revenge. But live the life you parents wanted for you, don't leave this world with any regrets. And if you must hate something for your parents' death don't hate the devils for killing them hate the evil in the world. Find something to love and protect. Then protect it with your life. And if you die protecting it now you did all you could. But most of all do not regret anything. I've seen many humans die in vain and die regretting they didn't do this or didn't tell that person this or that before they died. That is my only request, do you accept it? Issei then answered yes I accept your request and will live my life without regrets. The wolf then told him very well I will bring you back to life, but let me take control of your body as you are tired. I'll take you to a safe place and wait for you to wake up. The boy agreed then asked the wolf one final thing. Before I go I want to ask. What's your name? The wolf answered him with one word. Skull. Issei heard that then passed out. Back to real world. Issei started to heal, then he woke up, but it wasn't Issei it was Skull he was using Issei's body and fled to a safe place for Issei to wake up in. Fifteen minutes later. Brafia returned to the spot where Issei died expecting him to be there so that she could bury him with his parents, but when she got there Issei wasn't, there was blood splattered where he and Grafia laid, but that was all, no sign of a trail of blood in case a wild animal took him, there was nothing just as blood splattered in one spot. As she looked for his body a blue and black wolf print appeared on her right where her heart is without her knowing. But little did she know that, that mark would be the beginning of many things. Issei is currently waking up in an unknown bed. Huh, where am I? Issei asks nobody in particular. Wait, was yesterday all a dream? Issei exclaims to himself hoping it was. No Issei, I'm sorry, but that wasn't a dream. What? Skull. Where are you? It sounds like you're in my head. Issei yells out loud. That's because I'm in your head Issei, remember when I said I sealed myself into sacred gear. The sacred is a part of you so now I'm a part of you. I still don't get how you can speak in my head, but with all that's happened it doesn't surprise me. Issei tells Skull. Hey Skull where are we? I don't recognize this place. Issei questions Skull. Oh yeah, I almost forgot to tell you. When I was in your body I used some magic on the owner of this apartment complex, so you could stay here. At least until you woke up. Wait, you can do that with magic. Can I learn to do it too? The wolf huffed and laughed then answered when we start training I'll teach you things you can only dream about. Awesome. Wait, training. When did we decide that? Well don't you want the strength and power to protect yourself and the ones you love? Well yes but how hard will this training be? Issei asked scared for the answer. Harder than anything you've ever done times 10. The wolf said it was nothing. What? Issei yelled while he felt sweat drop. Well considering you have been sleeping for almost two weeks, you should have enough energy for two weeks. The wolf said calmly. That's not how it works goal at least not for humans that is wait what two weeks. 
Well considering you were killed and had a giant hole in your and had about a dozen broken bones, you recovered very fast for a human granted I gave you some of my power to revive, so you aren't exactly 100% human anymore. If I'm not human then what am I? The boy asked worriedly for the response. Um, that's hard to say you're still mostly human, but now you have some of my power. So I'm a werewolf? Issei asked. Not exactly, I would say you're closer to that of a half-wolf. Half-wolf? Issei questions. It's when a werewolf and human breed, there's a 50% chance the offspring will turn out human, and 45% chance it could be a werewolf, but the final 5% is a rare case that is what you call a half-wolf. But don't worry you aren't a half-wolf just very similar, okay enough explaining go get ready we start training immediately. When Issei finally found the bathroom to take a shower, he took off his shirt as he was doing this, he noticed a strange mark on his dot, it was a silver paw print no bigger than a tennis ball. Hey school what is this mark? The boy asked the wolf intriguingly. That's why what that's impossible. The wolf yelled. Issei could feel the wolf's surprise. What? What is it? Is it bad Issei yelled, starting to get worried. No not exactly the wolf pondered if the boy was old enough to know. What does it mean then? Tell me. Fine, but don't blame me if you get confused because you don't know about these kinds of things yet. After a few moments when the wolf thought of how he would word it he began. When I still had a physical body before I sealed myself into the sacred gear I made that mark using my magic. It's a type of contract bond I call the wolf's bond, so I could know if my mate was safe, and to make sure she stayed loyal to me. Stay loyal? What does that mean? And couldn't you just keep your mate with you at all times to make sure she was safe? The boy asked curiously. Well I had something you humans call a harem. The boy was starting to get frustrated and asked. What does that have to do with keeping your mate safe? And that doesn't answer what the heck does staying loyal mean, and now what the heck is a harem? Little did the boy know in the near future he would have one of the most famous harems the mortal and supernatural world have ever seen. A harem is when you have multiple mates or lovers so I couldn't exactly keep them all with me all the time, so I made the mark so they would stay loyal to me, and if they were in danger I would know so I could rush to them. And to answer your question staying loyal means well if you aren't loyal, you will go behind your lover's back and do things that they don't want with other people. Skoll said trying his very hardest to keep it PG as Issei was only 7. Okay whatever that means wait. That still doesn't answer why I have the mark. Oh I guess you're right hmm, I guess you mark somebody while bonding. For every mate you have you will get a new mark, and the color that represents them will be the color of the mark. So since it's silver, do you have anybody in mind that might be represented by silver? The wolf asked. Um, oh, oh. I have one guess but wait never mind it can't because I don't even like any girls yet, Issei says this thinking of the only girl he knows that could give him the silver mark Raphia. 30 minutes later. As Issei went to the nearby mountain Skoll told him to go. As he got to the mountain it felt different he couldn't tell why other than it was harder to walk and breathe. Hey Skoll, why is it so hard to breathe and do anything physical? Issei asked. That's because somebody placed a spell here long ago to help them train. It should also keep anybody not supernaturally involved out. Okay so what do I do now since I'm here what am I going to do? Aren't you stuck in my sacred gear? The boy asked how he would be trained. The day we aren't going to do anything that needs my physical help, we're just doing the basics. When the time comes for me to step in, I'll train you in your dreamscape. Now before you ask me what your dreamscape is, it's the place where you and I talked when you first awakened me. Now go. Start off by running down the mountain, then back up and do 25 pull-ups on that tree over there. When you're done tell me and we'll learn to summon my sacred gear and basic magic. Now go. Skoll said this, but wondered if the boy would make it halfway up the mountain. Issei started running down the mountain, but by the time he was halfway down, he felt the magic making him heavier and forcing him to conserve energy. As Issei reached the bottom he was about to collapse from exhaustion, but then the memory of his parents getting killed by visor flashed in his mind. He forced the exhaustion away and ran up the mountain not wavering in the least. This surprised Skoll as he used his parents dying as a motivator, as most in his situation wouldn't want to remember their parents' death, considering it just happened. As Issei got to the top of the mountain he was doing his 25 pull until he blacked out. Unknown area. Issei is thinking during all of this. How where am I? Why can't I move? As Issei tried to move he noticed he was moving by himself or whatever he was, was moving. Hey. Anyone there Skoll? As Issei was trying to figure out what was happening he noticed he was looking out of somebody's eyes. And they were moving by themselves. As Issei was looking out he noticed it was different than where he grew up and lives. It was an old town. Like medieval times. He saw in a window what he looked like. He was a very handsome man with black hair and blue eyes almost like skulls, but out of nowhere the man and Issei felt an agonizing pain in there. 
The man seemed to know what it was as he dropped everything he had and ran. He ran faster than Issei could think anyone could run. But as he got away from the town the man started turning into an animal. As Issei tried to figure out what the man was, he thought wolf. As the man transformed into the wolf he ran faster and faster until he came to a stop. At a fairly large house that looked very well kept. Issei noticed it was out in the middle of the forest. Issei now smelled a familiar smell, it was the same smell Issei smelled the night his parents died. His body moved again to open the door. As he did this Issei was shocked. In the house were five of the most beautiful women, but they were all beaten and dead. As he saw this he was suffocated by the pure rage and sorrow the man wolf was emanating. The last thing he saw before he blacked out again was his reflection. The man or wolf was skull. Back in real time. Issei. Issei wake up. Issei's eyes fluttered open. What happened? One second I'm doing my training then next thing I know I'm being woken up by an obnoxious wolf. Issei was still trying to figure out what just happened as he told Skull this. I'll pretend I didn't hear the last part. But to answer your question you passed out from exhaustion you overexerted yourself, I'll be honest with you when I said to run down the mountain and back up, I didn't expect you to make it halfway, but you proved me gravely wrong you doubled my expectations, but I must admit you're much stronger than one would think you don't give up easy do you? As he said in the last part it was more as a statement than a question. I overexerted myself. Issei said, sounding disappointed. As I said you did much better than most kids your age, I would be proud of yourself if I were you. I guess. Okay when do we start the next part of training? Issei said as he started to get up. And made up his mind to keep what he saw to himself, as if it was school he didn't think he would want to explain what it was yet. Ha. Ah, I'm starting to like you even more kid. Before you start let me tell you what my specialty in magic is. I have two specialties, one of them is a blue flame called eternal flames, but there is also called the flames of purgatory. That is my first type. It can be the strongest flame in the universe if you train and master it. Now to my second one it's called the power of destruction. It looks like a blue and black flame, but it doesn't give off any heat, but it destroys everything in its way. I taught the power of destruction to a devil named Zekram Bale. He learned it and taught it to the members of his clan. But do not worry, his power of destruction is merely a copy dot, I am the only one with the true power of destruction, and soon you too. All right now since I explained that stretch out your hand and think of the strongest thing that comes to mind. Skoll explained. As Issei stretched out his arm he tried to think of the strongest thing he knew. Then it hit him, as he closed his eyes he imagined none other than Skoll himself. Didn't think you thought so highly of me. The wolf scuffed. Shut it Skoll. As Issei was imagining Skoll his arm burst into blue and black flames. Ah. Skoll. It burns. Issei couldn't control the immense amount of power. Calm boy. Calm yourself and it will subside. The flame subsided but left a few burns on Issei's arm, but started to heal quickly after. Now on his arm was a blue and black gauntlet similar to Drake's, but had sharp claws like a wolf, and a few more spikes that emanated the blue and black flames. Issei stood in awe and shock until Skull spoke up. Issei this is your sacred gear it is unique unlike others it wasn't created by the god of the bible it was made by me personalized for you. This is its basic form, but as you get stronger you can change its properties and change the form of it to anything you want. What do you mean change its properties? Issei asks curiously. Well some other sacred gears I know of are the boosted gear, the divine dividing and the strongest of all, the true longinus, as the true longinus is purely strength and can only be controlled by a few individuals, the boosted gear and divine dividing have unlimited possibilities, it's just up to the host to find those possibilities. Now the boosted gear works to boost his host's power, as the name suggests the divine dividing divides his opponent's power and adds the power it takes to its host's power. So if you grow strong enough you will learn more properties of this sacred gear. So what is stronger, the true longinus or my sacred gear? In raw power I would say they are equal, but as you are now, you are nowhere near strong enough to use it to that degree, but when you do get stronger and add onto your sacred gear your sacred gear will be stronger, but only if you will it too. You must get much stronger to do that. Um, okay I guess that answers most of my questions. I do have one last question though. Issei asked. Um. Let's hear it then. Does my sacred gear have a name? The boy asks with a serious expression. You know what? I never thought of one him if I had to name it, I would probably name it the false longinus, as it wasn't made by the god of the bible. Really that's the best you come up with? The false longinus. You could have given a little more thought into that yakno. Oh shut it. What's wrong with it anyways? It's technically true. Oh nothing's wrong with it, I just thought the great and powerful skull would have some great and intimidating name, but no this works just fine. Issei says sarcastically. HMPH fine I didn't need your approval. I made it so I named it. Now get back to training. Skull scuffed. 
Two hours later. The boy was currently laying on the mountain staring at the stars and talking to school. Hey school. Hmm. I think I want to go somewhere far away until I get stronger. Issei exclaimed. And why is that? I don't feel right being here. I feel like for me to be able to stay here I need to be strong, or at least strong enough to protect others. Hmm. I get where you're coming from but. Please. The child begged. Ugh, fine I have one place you will be able to go to as their leader owes me. But to go there you will need to be able to master the basics of magic and physical strength. If you don't they will kick you out in days if even. Alright. So let's get back to training. The boy says happy with the answer. One month later. Alright I think you have finally learned the basics. Finally. So when do we leave? Not yet Ice you have to pass one test before I can let you go. What? I thought you said once I learn the basics. I'm giving you this test to make sure you did, I can only say for what I saw now it's time to use it in a real battle. The battle? Where do I find one? And I've only practiced on still targets. How am I supposed to win against a moving one? If you do everything I told you, you will win easily. Okay fine, but you never answered where do I find one. Silence. You didn't think about that did you? Nope. Ugh let's go find one then. 7 hours later 2 o'clock am. We're never going to find anything to fight. Patience is say, yelling won't solve anything. I know but it's been like 7 hours. I'm starving. Can't we get something to eat, Skull is that what I think I'm sensing? Issei asks Skull. Yes, it looks like you're done waiting, are you ready? As ready as I'll ever be, Issei says seriously. Alright remember what I told you. Be careful it's coming from the hill to your left. It looks like there's a shrine over there. Issei starts running towards the shrine. As he gets there he notices four fallen angels ganging up on a mother and child. Ice don't fight them there are too many you cannot take them all. I let you go without passing the test, let's leave unfortunately we cannot help them. Issei starts to leave until he hears a woman scream. He turns around to see the mother lying on the ground with a light spear through her stomach, then he notices the girl over her mother crying and unable to do a thing. As Issei sees this, the memories of his parents' deaths flash by and in a second he bolts out of the bushes he was hiding in. Ha! Barakiel's wife sure was weak. Now to finish off the trash. The fallen angel leader exclaims. Ah. The second fallen angel screams in agony. As the other three fallen angels look back they see their comrade fall to the ground, but behind him was a demon, they saw a boy no older than eight, but the aura around him was pure black and filled with hatred. Ah. You bastard. You will pay for that. One of the fallen angels screamed. As the second fallen angel rushed him he saw the boy move, but it was too late. There was a hole in his stomach from the boy's fist. As he started walking towards the last two, the other fallen angel that wasn't the leader said let's just forget it. We did what we were ordered to do. Yeah you're right let's go. The leader told his subordinate. They both started to fly away until the leader felt something grab his ankle as he looked down, he saw the boy grab onto his ankle and bring him crashing down. Wait. What do you want? I'll give you anything. Just spare me. He tried to negotiate, but as he looked into the boy's eyes, it was nothing but black. Next thing he knew he had his brain smashed. Issei. Pull yourself together. Huh? What? I thought we were leaving. Ugh. I thought this would happen eventually but not this soon. You remembered when your parents died when you saw the girl and her mother get killed so you let rage take over you. Speaking of which, where is the girl? Huh? She was right there a second ago. She must have run when you were beating the fallen angels to death. But now since one escaped, they will most likely tell their superiors and will have a bounty on you. Great, just what I needed. It's too late now just go home and pack your things we are leaving immediately. 45 minutes later. Alright I'm done packing. Alright now prepare a magic circle this teleportation spell will take a lot of magic, so be warned. Issei prepared the magic circle and got in it. Alright so now what? Where are we going? Oh, we were visiting an old friend. Where does this old friend live? Issei exclaims worriedly. Asgard. Ifrist, Asgard. Ifrist is the bridge that connects Earth to Asgard. Ugh, I'll never like teleporting, Issei says aloud. You better get used to it because you're going to have to teleport a lot soon. Yeah yeah I know. Anyways, where is everybody? Issei is then surrounded by 30 Valkyries and Asgardian soldiers. Found them. You there, how did a kid like you get in Asgard? Only a select few outsiders can get in here. Who are you? One of the Valkyries asked. Um, Issei. Issei didn't know how to answer. Who sent you? If you don't tell us we will have no choice than to kill you even if you are a child. The same Valkyrie asked again. Um, Skoll said to come here, Issei said weakly. And why would Lord Skoll send you? Do you take us for fools? The Valkyrie yelled as they all started to charge Issei. 
Um, Skull. What do we do? They don't look like they're stopping anytime soon and I can't take on all of them. Issei yelled to Skull. The Valkyries and soldiers rushed Issei and were two feet away from him about to kill him. Kneel. As Skull yelled this all of the attackers were forced to kneel from the power they felt from the voice. As Asgard fallen so low as to kill a mere child solely because they're scared. If so I pity Odin for having such lowly warriors. I could command you all to end your own lives right now if I wanted. And I should. Skoll says this with disgust and power in his voice. Who are you? How are you powerful enough to make us kneel before you? The same Valkyrie asked Skoll. It is as Issei said I am Skoll. And you were about to kill my host and student. Lord Skoll. I am very sorry. Please if you must take a life take mine and not the rest of my soldiers. I was the one who said to attack the boy. The Valkyrie begged. Um, I don't know if ending all of your lives sounds much better to me. As Skoll said this all the warriors' faces paled knowing if he willed it, they would all die no questions asked. Please Lord Skoll. Spare my soldiers' lives take mine instead. The Valkyrie pleaded even more. HMPH, fine I will spare their lives under one condition. Yes thank you for sparing them now what is the condition? He will serve Issei and be his personal servant. What? But I am a proud Valkyrie. I would die before I became somebody's servant. The Valkyrie exclaimed. HMPH, I guess I'll have everyone take their own lives then. Wait. I'll do it, I'll become the boy's servant the Valkyrie said defeated. Very good choice. Now take the boy to Odin we have much to talk about. There's no need. I am already here. Although I'm surprised, when you told me you were going to seal yourself into sacred gear, I didn't expect you to actually do it, Odin says. Shouldn't you know by now don't doubt me when I'm serious. Oh I guess after all the time I've known you when you said you would do something, you did it. Now boy what is your name? Odin asks Issei. Issei Hayato, Mr. Odin. Issei says meekly. Alright Issei nice to meet you, you may call me Odin. Now Skoll, why did you bring him here? I have my guesses, but knowing you it could be what I least expect Odin says. I had the boy come here because he must get stronger. And he doesn't think he should be able to stay where he was raised because he doesn't deserve it and remember you owe me. I will train him very well, Odin agrees. Oh and that Valkyrie over there no longer serves you she serves Issei now. What? You're this boy's servant now Odin yells out. Yes Lord Skoll said if I didn't he would kill all of my soldiers. Ah, that makes a little more sense. So I see you're still as conniving as ever Skoll. Odin says while grinning. What can I say it's in my nature. Very well Roswis you are now Issei's servant. Now Issei please take care of her, she's like a daughter to me. Odin tells Issei. Of course, I'll do my best. Hmm, it seems you found yourself a good host Skoll. Odin tells Skoll. Of course I wouldn't let just anybody use my power. Skoll says proudly. Oh I guess you're right anyways Roswis, why don't you show Issei to his room? And Issei meet me in the training ground in an hour we start training immediately. But I must warn you it will not be easy in the slightest. And if Skoll sent you, you must have learned the basics already, so we're diving straight into training no introductions are needed. Issei's room in Asgard. Hey Skoll, do you think I made the right decision to come here? I honestly don't know only time will tell, I do know this though, this will help you get much stronger. So it's not necessarily a bad decision, I can say that. I guess so. Knock knock. Issei Sama, Odin wants you to come down to the training grounds now. Roswa says through the door. Alright thank you, but didn't I tell you to just call me Ice? Oh but I can't, I'm your servant. No excuses, I order you to call me Ice. Alright Ice Roswa says defeated. As Issei walked down the hallway towards the training grounds he thought. This is going to be one hell of a ride. Issei is currently lying in bed after a training session with Odin. Ugh I thought after the first week I wouldn't be this sore after training. Issei said. This is why I told you to learn the basics before you came here. But it seems Odin has taken a liking to you. So if he trains you harder, it's only because he wants to see you grow stronger. Yeah okay that's some tough love he's showing then. Issei says this while thinking about something else. Skoll notices this and asks. Issei. Why are you acting like this? You've been acting down the past few days. What's troubling you? Ugh I guess I can't hide anything from you can I? It's about Roswis. I can't help but feel like the bad guy about her being my servant. Whenever I'm around her I feel like she doesn't want anything to do with being my servant, Issei says downcast. Um, the whole reason I told her to be your servant was because I thought it would make your life much easier, but I guess I was wrong as it's making it harder instead. I guess if you really feel that bad you can release her from servanthood, but it's up to you. I may have to do that as much as I don't want to. I'd be more happy if she's happy. Issei exclaims. A few days later. I wonder why Odin asked for me and you. Issei exclaimed. 
Knowing Lord Auden it could be anything Ross was tells Issei. Agreed. Issei exclaims. Auden's office. There are currently 14 Asgardian soldiers and 8 Valkyries, Issei, and Ross was standing in Auden's office, waiting to get debriefed. Ah. You're finally here. Now I'm guessing you're wondering why I called you all here. There's a small group of trolls raiding small towns in Alfheim. I called you all here because you are the ones I'm sending. Auden debriefs them all. Everyone starts to leave and get ready for the upcoming battle except Issei and Roswas. Auden looks up from his work expecting everyone to be gone, but gets surprised seeing Issei and Roswas standing there. Um, Shouldn't you two be getting ready? Roswas speaks up. With all due respect to Lord Auden, I don't think Issei should go on this assignment, he is simply too young and has only barely been here two months. Why do you think I called for you too Roswas? You are now Issei's servant. I wouldn't be dispatching you if I wasn't dispatching Issei. Auden tells Roswas. Um Mr. Auden why are you dispatching me I don't think I'll be that much help and will probably only get in the way. Issei says. It's a test to see how much you've grown. If you haven't grown that much, I'm just going to send you back to Earth. Auden tells Issei calmly. Issei and Roswas leave to go prepare for the battle. But Roswas is even more downcast than normal. Issei notices this and makes up his mind about what he and Skull talked about a few days earlier. One hour later after battle meeting. That was the longest meeting I've ever been in. Exclaimed Issei. Agreed but Issei are you sure about what you're going to do? Positive. Issei tells Skull. Okay but if I were you I would tell her before your battle so she can have a clear state of mind. Yeah I'll tell her right now. After a few minutes of looking, Issei was called to the dispatch room to get dispatched. Issei was a bit annoyed he couldn't find Roswas before, but knew he could talk with her before they got dispatched. Hey Roswas. Issei yells to Roswas. Hi Ice. What's the matter? Roswas says. I need to talk to you before we're dispatched. Issei says, catching his breath. Okay what is it that's so urgent? Roswas says a bit worried. Okay this is all up to you, but I can't stand having you look so unhappy all the time being my servant. So I'm releasing you from servanthood if you truly desire. But don't answer now. I need your help on the mission. Issei tells Roswas. Roswas's face lit up when she heard what Issei said and then answered. Alright. Then let's get this mission on. Somewhere on the battlefield. Alright everyone we're going to the forest to get to the village to the east. The leader says. Yes sir. Issei and his platoon yelled at once. Issei and his platoon including Roswas, are currently heading through the forest to get to the latest raided village, hoping to pick up on the trolls' tracks. Everyone is already on edge as they were told about how trolls fight and how gruesome they could be. It was the worst for Issei as this was his very first battle considering he wasn't himself versus the fallen angels. Everyone stay alert. I'm sensing some magic auras ahead. The leader exclaimed. Issei and the rest of the platoon keep moving forward getting ready for an attack. As they're about to stop for a break they were ambushed. Ambush. Somebody yelled. Everyone defensive formation. The leader yells. No everyone scatters they have a magic cannon. Another soldier yells. As they were split up half and half the half who assumed a defensive position were all obliterated. Fire the signal. We need reinforcements. A soldier yells. Everyone attack the cannon. Once we take it out we'll focus on the foot soldiers. The leader yells. Issei stay by me. Watch my back. Rasuus yells to Issei. Alright. Issei says. Later. Ah they never end. How many are there? Issei yells. I don't know but don't let up. We cannot afford to be beaten. Roswas yells back. Ah. One of the Asgardian soldiers yell as a sword is thrusted through them. Everyone fall back. The appointed leader yells. They all start to fall back until Issei notices Roswas isn't there. Has anyone seen Roswas Issei yells frantically. Issei bolts away to find Roswas. Issei yells frantically but no answer. Issei keeps running, thinking of the worst case scenario. Issei keeps yelling, but no response, he's sighted by multiple trolls, but keeps running before they can get to him. After about 10 minutes of running he gets to a field bathed in blood and sees Roswas finishing the remaining trolls in the area. Issei yells across the field. Roswas's face lights up seeing Issei is safe. Issei starts running towards her until he notices one last troll. Roswas watch out. Issei yelled. Issei dashed and jumped right before it hit Roswas and tried to block the club, but it was too powerful. Roswas was safe, but Issei was launched into a tree nearby. Ugh it hurts everywhere Issei says in his mind. That was really reckless Issei. Yeah I know, but what else could I do? If I didn't do something Roswas would have gotten hit by that and it could have killed her. Whoa calm down, I never said that wasn't the right decision. Sometimes the right decision can be very reckless, but if you don't go for it, you will live regretting you didn't. Issei. Stay with me. Don't you dare give up. 
Roswes exclaims almost in tears. That was the last thing Issei remembered before he blacked out. A few days later. Issei's eyes flutter open for the first time since the battle. Ugh my back is killing me what happened. Don't you remember? You jumped in the way of a troll trying to attack Roswes. Oh yeah wait. Where's Roswes? Is she okay? Look down Issei. As Issei looked down he saw a sleeping Roswes with her head on the hospital bed. Um, she looks so peaceful. Issei thinks. Um, it seems you've finally awakened. Aden exclaims out of nowhere. Oh uh, yeah. Issei says while the back of his head sheepishly. Just so you know Roswes has been there the whole time you were asleep. She refused to leave for anyone, not even me. Really? I wonder why. Issei says. And I heard about what you told her before you left. I must admit you are very brave letting such a good servant go, even if she wasn't happy with being one. Oh you really think so? Issei asked, embarrassed. I know so. Auden says confidently. So what did she say? Is she going to quit being my servant? Issei asks. Why don't I let her answer that? She seems to be waking up, but I'll be taking my leave now. Auden says while grinning. Wait. Did I pass the test? Issei is worried he failed it since he was injured so badly. No, you passed it with flying colors. Auden says with a huge smile. Issei is sitting there stunned for a second. I passed it with flying colors how? He thinks to himself only to be brought back to reality by Roswes's voice. Ice. Roswes says groggily. Issei. You're awake thank god you're okay. Roswes yells loud enough for the entire hospital to hear. Yeah I'm fine, but my back is killing me. Issei replies. I bet you flew into that tree at light speed. But why did you do that? I was planning on quitting from being your servant. Roswes says with tears in her eyes. Do I need a reason why? It should be a no-brainer to do that for somebody you care for. Issei exclaims. Roswes blushes at this and says. Well I thought about your offer from before the battle. And I must formally refuse. I will be your personal servant until the day I die. Really even though you wouldn't be serving Aden. Or put on any missions that I'm not in. I'm positively silly. Roswes says as she sees Issei's forehead. As she sees Issei's forehead he notices something stand out on her right where her heart is, until she pulls away. Wait. Issei yells. Huh? Roswes says confused. Until she saw where he was staring. Issei. Have you been hanging out with Aden so much that you've caught onto his habits, Roswes yells while slapping him. Ow. And no look. Issei exclaims. What? What is that? I've never had a tattoo in my life. Where did it come from? Roswes yells confusedly. Sure enough there was a black and blue paw print on right where her heart is. Hey well that's a long story Issei says worried about a reaction. After the long discussion about the paw print. What? You mean this tattoo shows that I'm yours, and that I'm your future mate, and I won't be attracted to any other men, and I'll want to serve you even more now, Roswes yells louder than when she saw Issei awake. The answer to all your questions is yes, but we must have bonded while I was asleep, and you were next to me because I only had one mark before. You have more than one mate Roswes yells even more flustered than before. Oh didn't I mention that? Look. Issei says while taking off his shirt. But this time when he took off his shirt sure enough there was a silver mark, but right next to it is a light blue one, meaning it's Roswes. So you get marked like us. Showing you belong to us. Roswes asos. Something like that Issei says. Wait so who's the other girl then Roswes asks again. That's the problem, we don't know who it is, Issei answered embarrassed. You're kidding me Roswes answers dumbfounded. A few years later, Issei age 14. Issei is currently walking back to his room after a long training session with Aden. Ah that felt good. I needed some training. I haven't been sent on a mission for so long. Issei says. I think you made a new record that's the longest you've lasted against Lord Aden ever. Roswes says while handing Issei a towel. Yeah but it still seems like I'm not strong enough. Issei says while thinking about how far he and Roswes have come. They haven't done anything serious, just have gotten much, much closer, and every once in a while, Roswes even sneaks into Issei's bed. At first he was confused and a little weirded out until Skoll explained that those who have the mark will want to be closer to their mate and enjoy body-to-body -body touching. Back in Issei's room. Knock knock. Yes. Issei asks through the door. Ice Lord Auden wishes to speak with you. Roswes says. About what? Issei asks. He said not to tell you anything, just take you there. Roswes answered. All right lead the way then. Issei said. Auden's office. Knock knock. Come in. Auden says through the door. What did you call me for Gramps? Issei asks. Note. Issei started calling Auden Gramps a few months back. Issei, do you want to fight strong people other than myself? Auden asks flat out. 
I mean I'm not a warmonger, but I think to get stronger I must fight many different kinds of powerful people. Issei answered. Then would you like to participate in the great rookie tournament that us smaller factions have every 10 years? The three great factions don't participate, but other factions like the Greek, Egyptians, werewolves, and vampires. There are more, but those are the main ones. Every faction chooses their greatest rookie, and they all fight to bring their faction fame and power, but most of all, there's always money pool from the bets, and the victor gets a cut from it. Odin says. I would love it too. But I'm technically not a part of the Norse, Issei answered sadly. There are no rules saying you have to be born in your faction. You must be trained by your faction. So since I've been training you myself there should be no problem. Odin says with a grin. Really I'll do it then. Wait, you didn't go making a bet with somebody to see whose disciple is stronger again, did you? Issei said. What? Why would I ever do that? Odin says sarcastically. Who is it? Issei is disappointed in Odin. Zeus and Anubis. Odin says defeated. You mean the Greek god chief and the great Egyptian god Issei yells. Bingo, they both have disciples but they're older than you Zeus's is 18, and Anubis's is 17. So you have the age disadvantage. Odin tells Issei. What have I gotten into? Anyways, do you think I can win? Issei asks. Depends if you use school's power intelligently you will be on par. But if you do end up winning I heard there's a rumor going around that one of the four great satans is going to be there. I think it was Lucifer. So if you win it will give the Norse a lot more publicity. Odin says. Great so I know I have one of the strongest devils watching my fight now. Issei says. So when is the tournament? Issei asks. One week from now. Odin answers. Then let's go old man we're going to be training until then. Issei says while going to the training room. Odin smirks at this and follows. Ten minutes before first match. Are you ready Issei? I don't know if I would call it ready, but I'm ready to go. Issei says while fidgeting. Issei you need to calm down. Roswe says trying to console Issei. Yeah, yeah I know anyways where's Odin, shouldn't he be here giving me pointers like you and Skull? No, he's greeting the other leaders in the VIP room. Roswes answers. Ah figures I forgot one of the four great satans was going to be here not to mention other leaders from other factions. Anyways. Any last pointers before I go? It looks like it's about to start. Issei says finally done fidgeting. Don't get ahead of yourself out there, surrender if you think you're in any fatal danger. Agreed, don't try to be the tough guy these types of fights have deaths a lot more often than you would think. You fight until you or your opponent cannot fight anymore or surrender. Roswes explains. All competitors please enter the arena. The referee announces over the speakers. Alright see you on the other side. Issei says. Roswes pulls Issei into a hug and says good luck. And be careful. Then Issei leaves. In the arena. In the arena are about 24 competitors including Issei. Wow, it's so big. Look at all the spectators. I even see Odin sitting over there, and the two next to him must be Zeus and Anubis. But I wonder who the others are? Issei says, still looking at all the people watching. Hmm, I recognize Athena the Greek goddess of war, Zeus, Hermes, and some others, but they aren't that important. Athena Hermes which ones? Issei asks curiously. Hermes is the one with short blonde hair and blue eyes wearing a white robe and helmet with two feathers on it. Athena is the pale woman over there with a herdless figure with the purple silver hair and light blue eyes, wearing the white dress with armor on her stomach and helmet crown and a staff in her right hand. Now if you can't find them with that description I don't know what will. Skull tells him. Yeah I see them. Issei said. Attention all contestants, I will now review the rules with all of you. It will be a 1v1 tournament. If you beat your opponent or he cannot fight and longer or surrenders you will advance. There are medical teams waiting outside every battle, so don't worry about injuries. There are no other rules other than do not fight your opponent after the match is finished if you do it's an automatic disqualification. Now the brackets will be brought up now. On a large holographic screen a bracket was shown. Issei Hayato, Norse vs Soul, Aztec, will be the first match. All other contenders please leave the arena and get ready for the next matches. The referee announces. Alright Issei let's go win this tournament. This is but a stepping stone to your dreams. Let's do this. Issei says calmly. Intestant Issei Hayato of the Norse. Are you ready? The referee asks. Issei nods yes then the referee asks again contestant Soul of the Aztec, are you ready? Soul nods. Then let us begin in 321 fight. The referee announces, then jumps away. Issei immediately activates his sacred gear which now went farther than his shoulder. Soul immediately rushes towards Issei while shooting fire from his fists. 
Issei dodges them all easily, but when Soul is about to land a fist on Issei's face Issei duck spins and backhands Soul into a nearby wall, the wall started to crumble, and smoke filled the air Issei summons six orbs of destruction and fires them at Soul, he's about to go in and fight Soul again, until he hears over the PAW system contender Soul is unable to fight any longer. The winner is Issei Hayato. Issei Hayato will now advance to the next round. Yes. Issei yells. Hongrits Issei, but that was only the first fight, the next fights will get harder and harder. In the VIP room. Everyone was in awe except Odin, Zeus, and Anubis. Odin is grinning uncontrollably when Zeus asks so this is the disciple you are so proud of. I must admit I'm impressed by how old he is. Odin grins even more and answers 14 with everyone's eyes widened even further, including Zeus and Anubis only 14, and yet he's this strong, he's a beast Anubis, who rarely speaks, yells. By this Odin is laughing uncontrollably um Odin. An unknown voice asks. Odin turns around to see a man in his late twenties with shoulder-length crimson red hair speaking to him. Oh Serzichas. It's a pleasure to see you again. Odin says cheerfully um likewise, but Odin what was that power your disciple used to finish off his opponent? It looked a lot like Po Serzichas said, only to be cut off by Odin, that's because it is the power of destruction. Odin answers calmly. What? How? Only the ones who inherit the power of Bale can use the power of destruction, is it a fake? Or a replica? Serzichas asks. You are right and wrong at the same time, Serzichas. Yes, only the Bale and their kin can use their power of destruction, but the power of destruction Issei uses is the real one. Odin says with a serious face now. What? Impossible are you implying Bale's power of destruction is a mere fake? Answers are offensive. No, no, no not in the least, but let me ask you this did you ever think about who taught your ancestors? Your ancestors are strong but not strong enough to create magic that is powerful. Odin answered, still calm. Then who taught my ancestors? And why does this Issei boy have the true power of destruction? Does this boy have something none of the Bale have Serzichas asked without patience? The one who taught your ancestors was the Great Skull, and the reason Issei can use the true power of destruction is because he has Skull's power Skull got tired of the world and wanted to see it through a human's eyes as a sacred gear he was awakened very early because the boy had his parents lives along with his own when he was seven by a stray devil. So when you all ask if he's a monster just know he has lost way too much for a child of his age every single day he trains and trains to get strong enough to protect what he loves. He doesn't even go back to where he was raised because he thinks he's not worthy. The only reason he joined this tournament was to get stronger. Not for the money or the fame, everything he does is to protect his loved ones. Odin finishes. After Odin started to yell mid-speech all of the people in the VIP room stopped and listened. A certain Greek goddess couldn't help but feel pity for the child. Forgive me for my rudeness Odin. Serzichas answered with his head down. It's fine I went a little too far myself. Odin said. But is it true? That the skull sealed himself into a sacred gear. The same one who went on a slaughter for anything evil for a month straight. Not wavering even when the great factions had to intervene. Serzichas asked. The very one skull taught your ancestors the power of destruction, but your ancestors never truly mastered it. That is why your power of destruction is red and black, and Issei's is blue and black. Odin answered. I see that changes a lot of things. Serzichas said while thinking. Serzichas may I have a favor. Can you keep Issei's power of destruction a secret until he's older? If you go telling everyone in the underworld the Bale may want to get their hands on him, and I made a promise to keep him until he's old enough. Sure when he's ready he may come out himself. Serzichas agrees. Back with Issei. Issei. That was amazing. Congrats. Roswis yells. Thanks. But that was only the first match, they're only going to get harder so I can't get too happy. Issei answered. Taking my words and using them for yourself are you now? Hey be honored if I repeated it I thought it was good. Issei told the wolf. Intestine Kukulkin from the Mayans is unable to continue. The winner is Zack, disciple of Zeus. On the screen is a tall and ripped brown haired man next to a mutilated body. Gulp so that Zeus is disciple huh? On another screen contestant Nanook from the Native American gods is unable to continue. The winner is set the disciple of Anubis. On the screen this time was a pale man with black hair and black eyes next to another body with a black hole through his dot. And that's Anubis's disciple Issei says worriedly. Don't worry Issei, they're probably the type of people to make it look worse than it had to to intimidate their opponents. Skoll said worried about Issei's safety. Later in the day right after semi-finals. After a long day of fighting Issei made it to the finals the fights got harder and harder, but none of them are going to be nearly as hard as the one he's about to partake in. Ugh finally the finals. That was so long. Issei says as he stretches. If I were you I would go watch the fight between Set and Zack. You need to figure out how they fight and use it to your advantage. 
as Say walks to the TV to see Zack and Set fighting Set looks much worse than Zack, but Zack still looks pretty bad, Set powers up one more magic beam and shoots it only for Zack to dodge and punch a fist through Set's dot as Say's eyes widened at this. That imbecile could kill the boy even if there are trained medics. The contender Set disciple of Anubis is unable to continue. The winner is Zack, disciple of Zeus. The finals will be against Issei Hayato, disciple of Odin and Zack, disciple of Zeus. It was silent for a minute until Ross was said. Issei you should drop out you've gotten far enough. You have proven you want to get stronger. No he needs to be beaten. He doesn't care about anyone's lives except his own. You saw how strong Set was. He didn't deserve that he could have just been knocked out. Now he may never wake up. But Ross was said knowing there was no changing Issei's mind. Remaining contestants to the arena. The referee announces. In the arena. He looks as good as new school. He must have been healed by the medics before this. Contestants are you ready? The referee asks if they both nod yes. 321, fight. The referee yells. In the VIP room. Odd and don't you think you should take your disciple out? Even Anubis's disciple was defeated by Zack. An Aztec god tells Odin. No, I believe he will win. Odin answers truthfully. Now I like the way you're thinking Odin. Who will win? My disciple or yours is? Zhu says. Let's just wait and see what Odin says. Back in arena. Zack rushes Issei at light speed immediately after the start. Issei gets caught off guard and gets dozens of punches landed on him. Issei is launched into the nearby wall still contemplating what just happened. What the? He's so fast. I can barely keep up. Issei. Calm down we knew this would be hard the moment we stepped foot into the arena. I know Boo Issei said only to be cut off by Zack's leg, sending him to a nearby corner. Issei. Get up. He's coming. You need to surrender. As Issei tries to get up Zack stops 20 feet away and yells. Weak. Even Anubis's disciple was stronger than you. I heard about your past. Boohoo you had your parents killed by a measly stray devil. I kill stray devils in my sleep. You wanna know why they died? Because they were weak. They died because they were weak. And so are you. And you say you get stronger so you can protect what you love. Don't joke with me. It will take you thousands of years before you can get even close to that strong. And after I kill you I'll go after your cute servant. I'll make her submit to me. And you cannot do a thing to stop me. Issei couldn't get up, he was in more pain than he could ever imagine. Blood coming out of his mouth and nose. Broken ribs, his muscles were screaming to stop. But once he heard what Zack said about his family and Roswas all the pain disappeared. In the VIP room. Lord Odin shouldn't you stop the fight and surrender your disciple. After what Zack said shouldn't you be worried. He said those things about the boy's family and his servant, he's going to be fighting blind. Anubis tells Odin. Odin flares his power and says. Don't you think I know that? Do you think I'm not angry about what he told to say? And how he spoke about Roswas, who I treat like my own daughter. Please let me apologize for my disciple's actions. I thought when I took him under my wing he would change, but it seems I was gravely mistaken. Zeus says slightly bowing. No need for Zeus, your disciple will get what he deserves. Odin then walks over to the glass to see Issei standing up again and grins. Zeus, have you ever heard the phrase a wolf is his strongest when backed into a corner? Or back a dog up in the corner it's gonna bite? Odin asks. Um yes. But what does that have to do with the fight? Zeus asks, confused. You're about to see firsthand what those words mean as Odin finishes saying that a huge flare of power erupted from the arena. Back in the arena. In the arena a large pillar of black and blue magic erupted from around Issei as he got up. After 30 seconds the entire sky was encased in darkness. But Issei started to change his canine teeth grew longer and sharper like a wolf's, and his hair turned black and blue like skulls, and his eyes turned blue, and he had magic oozing off of him. When he was done transforming he muttered. You can say all you want about me, but if you say anything ill about my family and loved ones, you will pay the price tenfold. I know I'm weak. Why do you think I joined the tournament? To get stronger it may take me years and years of training. But I will get strong enough to protect others or I will die trying. That is why if I die fighting you, I will regret nothing as he said this his aura got darker and darker every word. Zack noticed this change and smirked. Come attack me with all you've got. In a split second Issei was gone, and in another second Zack barely blocked Issei's punch, but was still launched into a nearby wall. Zack got up from the attack and you could see in his eyes he just realized what dormant beast he awakened. Zack powered up and reinforced his body with magic and charged Issei as Zack brought his fist to Issei it was stopped by Issei using only one hand. Zack tried to kick Issei which successfully hit Issei's head and it slung back everyone was quite thinking it was over until Issei's head came back up and launched Zack into a wall. 
Issei started charging up an enormous orb of destruction that could kill Zack easily, until Zeus flew into the ring blocking Issei from Zack. Issei dissolved the orb, and Zeus let out a breath of relief until in a split second Issei was eye to eye with Zeus. Zeus saw no fear in Issei's eyes, most in Issei's place would be cowering before the chief of the Greek gods. Even Zeus himself felt a shiver go down his spine at this. And what he did next is something none even dared to do. In another second Issei sent Zeus flying to another wall he was about to finish Zack off when he saw Zack unconscious in the debris, then he turned to the referee who was frozen in shock and asked. Is the battle finished? I think he's unable to continue. Issei said reverting to his normal self. Yes the winner is Issei Hayato of the Norse. The referee exclaimed. It was silent as nobody knew what they just witnessed. Until they all started cheering. Eyes. You did it. You won the tournament. Roswis yelled while running to hug Issei. Issei Hayato. Zeus yelled. Yes. Oh I'm sorry I punched you before Issei said with his head down, hoping to not get killed by Zeus. Lift your head boy. I should be the one thanking you for sparing my foolish disciple. The punch was but a small price to pay. And it's been too long since somebody looked at me with no fear in his eyes. It was refreshing. Zeus exclaimed. Well no problem I guess. Issei asked. Ahaha yes no problem indeed. Zeus answered. Back in B.I. Pyram. Ahahaha, I told that old fool not to interfere. Now he got himself punched on live television. Odin exclaims while laughing. Everyone else was still in shock at what they just saw until Athena spoke up. Lord Odin, that boy he didn't show any restraint or fear when face to face against my father, Athena said still in awe. Um. Taking a liking to say are we? Odin said while grinning. Well no it's just very rare for somebody to do that to my father. Athena said while blushing. Ah fear not your secret is safe with me, and just between us, Issei is planning on having a harem when he's older. Odin says while grinning. Really so am I lucky? Wait no. That's not what I meant. Athena says while running away blushing madly. Issei, Hayato we will meet again. I know we will. Athena thinks while walking away. Later that night in Odin's office. But still I never expected you to launch Zeus across the stadium. Odin says while laughing. That I thought I was going to die when he confronted me after Issei said. Wait what happened with the prize pool? Issei asks. Oh, I almost forgot about that. Around 4 billion dollars has been transferred into your account. What? 4 billion Issei yells. Yes the tournament is a big deal in the underworld and other realms. Wow but still 4 billion I'm set for life. Alright Issei, the real reason I called you here is for your future. I think you should go to high school. The high school? Why? Issei asks. You are strong enough to go into the real world now we've clearly seen in the tournament. But you lack any teenage lifestyle like going out after midnight and hanging out with friends. Those things are fundamental for a normal teenage life. Odin exclaims. Sure, I'll go to high school. Wait, really? That easy? Odin says surprised. Yeah I've gotten bored here, and plus it's not like I'm going right now I've got two years. Very well when you're old enough I'm sending you to high school. Okay, but do you have any idea what school you're going to send me to? Issei asks. Odin then answered yes I've already found one. An old friend recommended it to me. He's actually the one who gave me this idea. It's a school that's going co-ed in a few years. It's in your hometown. I think it was called Kuo Academy. Thank you everyone for reading. Now to answer some questions. Congratulations Issei. You're finally 16. Roswis exclaims. Yes, now you're old enough to go to high school. Odin tells Issei. Thanks. Thank you all for all the gifts. Issei tells everybody. Issei we need to talk. Okay. What's about? I'll tell you when you go somewhere in private. Somewhere private. Okay now what did you want to tell me? Issei asks. It's about your body now since you're 16 you will be experiencing some changes. What? Is it bad Issei asks worriedly. Not exactly you will gain wolf instincts and other will things, some changes you will have is you will attract strong people who will want to fight you. And another one is around other males you will want to establish who's the alpha male and other things similar to that, but I can't help but feel like I forgot a really big change you will probably need to know. Okay so nothing too bad I guess Issei says not knowing the last change. Alright now go back to the party you better enjoy it, you will be leaving for Japan in a few days. Yep they're probably wondering where I am. Issei says while walking back to the auditorium. The day of leaving for Japan. Oh man, I'm going to miss this place. Issei says to himself while packing up the last of his room. You know you will be back right? Maybe not for a while, but you will see this place again. Yeah I know, but it's just the whole reason I'm going to Japan again is because this place made me stronger. It's sentimental I could say. Issei said. 
Exactly so don't leave this place looking down, leave this place with a smile on your face. I say hurry up. We gotta go. Roswiss yells from down the hall. Alright I'm coming. Sheesh no patience Issei says. I heard that. Roswiss yells. Oh Issei Roswiss are you all ready to go? Auden asks. Yes Lord Auden we should be ready to leave immediately. Roswiss tells Auden. Well then I guess this is goodbye Auden says. Yeah I guess it is Issei says downcast. Oh come on now Issei. What did I teach you? Smile all the time. Even when you're face to face with death himself. So I don't want you leaving with a frown. Auden tells Issei. Yeah I know it's just pretty strange leaving. I've been here for 9 years now. I'm just packing up and leaving. Issei says. You know you can come back and visit anytime right? And when I get bored I'll probably come and visit. Auden said. True I didn't really think about that. Issei answered. Okay now Issei came over here so I can talk in private. Auden tells Issei to usher him away from Roswiss. What are Gramps? Issei asks. Okay first of all in the house I got for you and Roswiss under the master bed is a secret compartment I had installed personally. For you to open it, put some of your power under the bed, and it should come out. And second of all now this is the important part so listen carefully. Now since it's only going to be you and Roswiss in a house and you're probably going to bring more girls home, I think you need these. Auden says while handing Issei a box of condoms. Really? Do you really want me to go and knock up a bunch of girls? Including Roswiss. Issei says with a dumbfounded look. No of course not. Why do you think I'm giving you these? Auden says. Fair enough. Issei says with a perverted grin. That's my boy. Now get out there and do me proud. Auden yells. Issei we've got to go. Roswiss yells. Alright one second. Alright see you later Gramps. Issei says while hugging Auden. Yes I will see you later. Auden says. Issei and Roswiss then get into a magic circle and teleport to Japan. Go Japan. Ah finally we're here. Roswiss says while stretching. Yeah Issei answered a bit pensively. Alright the house Auden got for us should be right around there. Roswiss says. As they arrived at the house Auden provided them with, they noticed it was a fairly large traditional Japanese house with a forest and lake in the backyard. By request from Issei. Wow this is pretty nice. Issei says out loud. The yeah, Roswiss still admires the house. Issei then walks up to the door and says. After you my lady. Why thank you Ice. Roswiss says. As they got inside they both explored the house separately. Issei found his room and began unpacking his boxes until he found a picture of him and his parents. Hey school do you think my parents were found and buried somewhere in town? Issei asked. It's possible, note. Issei has never seen their grave or looked for it. I think I want to go find it then Issei says. Very well it's up to you. Issei then walks downstairs to tell Roswiss he's going out for a bit. Hey Ross I'm going out for a bit so do whatever you want. Issei tells Roswiss. Do you want me to come too? Roswiss yells from the kitchen. Oh uh, no I'm just going to see if some things from my childhood are still there. Issei answered lying. Alright be careful. Roswiss said. After a 15 minutes of walking, Kuo Cemetery. After about 10 minutes of looking in the rain, surely enough he found his parents' graves along with his own. Issei starts to weep and falls to his knees, ashamed that he never came to visit. Hey mom, hey dad it's been a while hasn't it? I've been doing fine. I met some good people who helped me get stronger in order to protect my loved ones. As Issei says this he starts to cry harder, letting some of his power flare. I've been trying to forget about that night, but I still get nightmares every once in a while, no matter how hard I try, I can never forget that night, I hope you guys aren't mad I haven't visited you guys before I didn't even know you guys were here if I knew I would have visited Issei says still crying. In the orc clue room. A certain red-headed girl is sitting at her desk finishing up some paperwork from earlier that day, when there was a surge of magic coming from nearby. Another occupant of the room shot up. But you? You felt that right. The blonde boy said. Yes Kiba, tell Akeno and Kaneko to get ready we are leaving immediately. The red-headed girl says. After about 10 minutes of looking, the redeed and her group find where the power is surging from. Ugh what would somebody be doing at a cemetery in the middle of a rainy night? The girl called Akeno says. It doesn't matter, we need to see if this power source is a threat. The redhead says. After about another 5 minutes of searching they find Issei on the floor crying by two graves. Arias I think we found it. Akeno is now called Rias. Yeah, Rias says. Hiba then readies his sword and says. Well. But you what's our next move? Should I attack? No I don't sense any malicious intent coming from him just sadness and deep regret for now let's just observe him. Rias answered. I can't help but feel bad for him seeing him cry like that, Akeno exclaimed. Yeah, Rias said. 
But I can't help but shake the feeling I've seen him before. It's a shame I can't see his face, Akeno says. Back to Issei's Pav. I'll be coming back to visit more often now too. And don't worry about me. I'm doing fine thanks to my friend Roswis Issei, who is still weeping over his parents' graves. Issei I know you need your time, but I detect four magic auras coming from over there. Sniff I know I feel it too. I don't think they're going to attack though, and if they do I can easily defeat them. Issei said. Yeah I know I just want you to be on your guard. Yeah I know you're just worried about me alright mom, dad I got to go it was nice talking to you both again oh, and I hope you don't mind if I remove my grave, because I know I'm not going to need it for a long, long time, Issei says. As he gets up he walks to his grave and lifts his fist and brings it down with such power it shakes the whole graveyard. Issei then leaves to get back to his house. Then Ria's and her group walk towards the grave he destroyed. Um but you, is it wise to just let him go? Kiba asks. Yes it's fine if we feel it again or he starts trouble then we can get him. Ria's answered. But I wonder why he destroyed this grave Akeno exclaims. Yeah I think it says Issei Hayato I wonder what he has against him. Ria said. With Issei. Ah that felt great to get out of my system. Issei is much happier than earlier. You do realize you could go to jail for destroying a grave right? Not really I'm pretty sure there is probably a way around the law considering it was my grave. Usually people don't destroy their own graves Issei anyways you better get home, Roswis is probably worried sick considering you flared your power like that. What? When did I flare my power? Issei asked. You're kidding me. Oh never mind I'm home anyways. As Issei opens the door Roswis runs toward Issei only wearing a towel. Issei are you alright I felt you flare your power and was about to go and look for you. Issei didn't answer though his blood started to rush and he couldn't control himself. So he pounced on top of Roswis. Issei what are you doing? Are you okay? Issei started to lean closer to her until. Issei. Roswis yells. Huh? Roswis. Why are you only wearing a towel? And why am I on top of you? Issei asks while starting to blush. Now I remember. Skull yells through the house. Remember what? Issei asked while still on top of Roswis. Remember how I told you would have some changes? And I said I thought I forgot a really important one. Yes don't tell me this has something to do with one of my changes doesn't it? Issei said a bit annoyed. Bingo. This is probably going to be the one that will affect you the most every few weeks you will have a so-called mating season, basically you will be attracted to females a lot more, and in some cases you won't be able to control yourself. Is there any way we can help him Roswis yells worried. There is one, but you're not going to like it. Tell me I'm Ice's personal servant and future mate. Ugh I warned you the only way to stop him is to satisfy his urges, and in the worst case scenario, you will have to bear one of his children. Um, I'm sorry Issei. But I'm not ready for that yet. Roswis yells blushing even more. Don't worry I wouldn't expect you to. I don't want my first time being forced. Oh good at least we are in agreement on that. Roswis says relieved. Wait Ross what day is it today? Issei asked, worried. Um Sunday, why? Roswis asked. Crap I've got to get to bed. I've got my first day of school in like 6 hours. Issei then runs to his room, closes the door and passes out on the bed. The next morning. Ice. Time to get up you need to get to school don't you? Roswis yells from the kitchen. Yeah, yeah I hear. Gosh I hate waking up early. Issei exclaims his eyes. Issei put on his school uniform and walked downstairs towards the kitchen. Wow Ross you really outdid yourself today. Issei tells Roswis. Why thank you, I thought I would make something a bit more special, considering this is your first time in school since a long time ago you've only had my tutoring up till now. Roswis exclaims. Yeah thanks. I feel like this is going to be an interesting day. I hope the thing Skull was talking about with my mating season doesn't affect me today. He said it was just a fluke since I had a big change turning 16, but who knows what Issei said. Yeah just be careful Aden was acting way too giddy when he told you about the school knowing him he probably kept something from you. Roswa said. Alright I gotta go I'm supposed to go early to meet my teacher and ask about my classes. Issei said. Alright, good luck. Roswa said. Across the street of Kuo Academy. Holy this place is huge, Issei says to himself. Agreed. As Issei is about to walk across the street he notices a bus coming down the street very fast. He thought nothing of it and minded his own business. Until a teenage girl about the same age as him may be older with a black bob cut and glasses walking across the street in the path of the bus. He noticed the bus was out of control and yelled hey watch out. But he knew she wouldn't be able to get out of the way in time. So he sprinted as fast as he could and dove and grabbed her, shielding her just in time so she wouldn't get hit. The bus then swerved and stopped in the middle of the road. And all the surrounding students started cheering for Issei. 
Are you okay? Issei asked the girl still holding on to her. Um yes thank you very much. What can I do to repay you? The girl asked as she bowed in thanks. Repay? Why would I need that? How could I let such a beautiful girl such as yourself get hurt? Issei says with a smile. Huh? Beautiful. The girl says while blushing. Exactly what I said, but anyways what's your name? I'm Issei Hayato. I just transferred here today. Issei asked. Oh um I'm Sona Satiri, the student council president. Nice to meet you Hayato-san. Sona said. Oh please just call me Issei. I'm not used to being called Hayato. Alright Issei I thank you again for saving me again if you need anything just ask me anytime. Sona says bowing again. Actually there is one thing. Would you mind showing me around the school? I don't really know where Issei asked. Oh of course I have student council work right now, so I can only take you to the faculty office now. Are you free after school? I'll take you on a tour after if you can. Sona says. Yeah I should be free, now we better hurry before we're late for class. Issei says. As Issei walked through the front gate a certain red head was staring at him questioningly from a window. Issei sensed this and looked up to see Arias. Hey school, doesn't that girl look a lot like Serzich's? Issei says in his mind to school. She does. I would be careful around her until you know who she is. School replies in his mind. Issei then looks up, winks then waves at her, she starts to blush, then leaves the window. With Rias. After Rias left the window she asked Akeno. Hey Akeno, who's that boy, doesn't he look familiar? Is he the one from the cemetery yesterday? I don't know, I've never seen him before. I think he just transferred, but he seems familiar to me too, but not for the same reason. Akeno answered. He seems interesting. Rias says. Oh, is Rias getting a crush on the transfer student? Akeno says with her sadistic smile. Oh no. Rias yelled while walking off to class. Back with Issei. Okay stay calm stay cool, don't draw attention to yourself, let's have a nice calm high school experience. Issei thinks to himself while knocking on the classroom door. Knock knock come in. The teacher says from outside. Issei then walks in and the whole class yells. It's the new prince who saved the student council president. As Issei hears this he hears school roll over laughing in his head. Issei then smiles awkwardly and stands there waiting for the teacher to finish the introduction. Alright class, calm down. Now please introduce yourself, then answer some questions after. The teacher tells Issei. Alright um my name is Issei Hayato please call me Issei where I come from they just call me Issei. I haven't been to a real school since I was 7 and I love animals and manga. Issei said, still smiling awkwardly. Alright now for questions. Who has one? The teacher said only to be interrupted by the whole class yelling questions. The teacher then picked a girl with glasses in the second row. Issei what kinds of girls do you like? This caught Issei off guard, but he still answered. And that's a hard question oh. Kind and selfless girls. Oh and if she has big S that just adds points in my book. Issei answered with a grin. The whole class erupted in laughter while the teacher's face palmed. Then the teacher picked another student with pink hair this time. Do you have a girlfriend, Issei? No I do not have a girlfriend, I've been very busy up till now, so I haven't had one yet. Issei answered and all the girls in the class cheered. Alright Issei you can go sit back in the corner by the window by Kiba. The teacher said as she was about to start class. Alright, thank you. And he walked to his seat. Nice to meet you Issei, I'm Kiba Kiba says as he extends his hand for a handshake. Likewise Kiba. Issei says while shaking Kiba's hand. Gym class. Ah finally gym class, I've been waiting all day for this class. Issei says while stretching. So Issei, are you any good at sports? It's been pretty boring. I'm always the top of the class Kiba said with no pride at all. Oh I don't mean to brag, but I've been involved in a lot of athletic things up till now. Issei says. Oh then this may actually be fun then. Kiba says. Alright class. Since we have a new student we're going to do tests to see how fast, strong, and flexible everyone is so get ready we're starting at 5. The gym teacher yelled. Alright let's start off with weighed down squats to see how many pounds you can handle on your squats. The teacher yelled. Note. I don't know what they're called sorry p. After nobody went up Issei volunteered. Alright I guess all you wimps aren't going to go up so I may as well. Issei said. Issei went up and the teacher added more and more weights onto Issei. Alright 50 ibs check 100 ibs check 125 ibs check 150 ibs check 200 ibs check. The class including the gym teacher, started to get wide eyes at how easily Issei was doing this. 425 ibs check 450 ibs check Issei are you sure you can do more? The teacher asked, seriously worried. Nah I'm fine this is easy anyways start adding by 50s now though this is starting to get boring. Issei answered. Issei you should probably stop now normal teenagers can't do that much. 
Ah why? Issei answered in his mind. Listen Issei I know you're really, really competitive, but that Kiba person is a devil, and there are multiple other devils watching you so man up, and don't let your pride ruin your high school life. Fine Issei said defeated. Alright that's enough I can't do anymore. Issei said as he just passed the 750 mark. Alright you are extraordinary Mr. Issei. That was truly amazing. The teacher said, still in shock. Then Issei noticed. Whoa. Why is everyone watching me? Including the girls from the other grades too. They all came to watch your spectacle when everyone was in shock. Kiba said a little suspicious of Issei. Somewhere in the crowd watching Issei. Sona, Akeno that boy is different. I don't know why but only the strongest of humans can do that much, and he's not a bodybuilder. He's lean and muscular but not that muscular, Ria said. Indeed Sona was suspicious as well. I can't help but feel attracted to him after that spectacle, though Akeno said to her together. Akeno. Keep it in your pants my gosh Ria said. Back with Issei. After about four more activities of Kiba getting destroyed in physical activities, it was finally speed tests. Alright Issei sorry to disappoint you, but your winning streak ends here I can honestly say I am much faster than you. Kiba said tired of losing against Issei. I'm sure fine if you can beat me I'll do one thing for you. Issei said knowing he wouldn't lose. Okay fine but what do you get if you win? Kiba said just to be a gentleman. You can do one thing for me. Is that even enough? Issei said. Deal. Kiba said, shaking Issei's hand. Alright, now to the 100 meter dash everyone line up. The teacher yelled. They all lined up and Issei was right next to Kiba waiting for the whistle. While well, all the other gym classes went to watch this as they knew Issei beat all of Kiba's record so far, but this one would be even greater as Kiba broke a world record before, so they were all thinking Kiba had this easy. 321 go. The teacher whistled. At first Issei was surprised by the speed of Kiba, but he then sped up himself getting past Kiba like nothing. Everyone was surprised by this, especially the devils watching nearby. Issei started running backwards and talking to Kiba. Come on Kiba I thought you were confident in your speed what happened? Issei said with a grin. Kiba then used his power as a knight trying to catch up with Issei, but it was impossible to catch up every time he tried. Issei would pull farther away. Then it finished with Issei victorious. As Kiba was catching his breath Issei put his hand down to help him up. So Kiba I got to admit you really surprised me by how fast you were. Issei said truthfully. Thanks but you clearly won so what do you want? Kiba asked. Who do you think you could show me around town? I'm Kindanu so I don't know crap Issei said. Sure that's pretty simple. Can you wait for me in the old school building? Kiba asked. Sure but I may be like 15 minutes after school the student council president is showing me around school after. Is that okay? Issei asked. Yeah, that's fine. Kiba said. After Sona's tour of school. Um I wonder where he is waiting. Did he say meet him inside or outside? Issei asked outside. I don't know, but I'm sure it's wise to hang out with devils. Hey it's fine I'm stronger than them even you can feel it. Alright then go inside if you're so sure. Watch me. Knock knock nothing Issei opened the door that went into a hallway. Issei walked down the hallway and found a door and opened it to find a room furnished with old Victorian style furniture that was way too expensive for a school club room. But he noticed a girl with red hair doing paperwork on her desk. Yes. Is that you Sona? Ria's asked. Oh wow I thought I would see a blonde dude not a beautiful girl like yourself, but anyways have you seen Kiba around I'm supposed to meet him here. Issei said. Ria's looked up and was extremely surprised to see Issei standing in the doorway. Oh I didn't expect you here, but to answer your question no, I haven't seen Kiba around. Ria's answered. Oh then sorry for intruding I'll be going now. Issei said bowing and about to leave. Wait. You can wait here if you want. I don't mind. Ria said, blushing a bit. Oh then I guess I'll accept your offer. Issei said while sitting down on one of the couches. So what club is this? Issei asked. The occult research club it is as the name suggests we research the supernatural. Ria said. Issei said something interesting. Indeed but may I ask what your name is? I'm Ria's Gremory a second year here. Ria said. Nice to meet you Ria's. My name is Issei Hayato, but please call me Issei. I don't like being called Hayato. As Issei said this Ria's immediately went on guard, remembering the grave that was destroyed yesterday, and the man at the cemetery she thought was Issei. Okay Issei, nice to meet you too. Ria said this and flirted her power to see if Issei would react as any normal human or supernatural being would. But no nothing, Issei just sat there smiling the whole time. The door then swung open, revealing Kiba, Akeno, and Kaneko. But you? Are you alright, Kiba exclaimed. Finally Kiba you're here I've been waiting. Issei said, getting up from his seat. Oh Issei it's just you yeah I kinda forgot about the deal, but shall we go? Kiba said as he and Issei walked out the door. 
Wow, they Kiba just ignored me Ria said. I think it's good Kiba hasn't had any friends while being here, but anyways why did you flare your power like that? Akeno asked. I was testing him to see if he was involved in the supernatural or if he was a normal human, but the scary part was he didn't even flinch when he felt it even a normal human would have a hard time breathing at least. Ria said. Shall we follow them? Akeno asked. Yeah let's do that. After the tour through town. Man it's already this late Roswiss is gonna kill me for worrying her. I don't doubt that good luck. I'm going to act like this was the worst day ever and try to get out of it. Issei said. As Issei walked in as quietly as he could, he spotted Ross was sitting on the couch watching TV. He then walked over and laid on the couch with his head on her lap. Ugh that was the worst day ever. Issei said trying not to get punished for being late. At first she seemed worried and fine, but then she got an annoyed look on her face. So Issei where were you? Do you have any idea how late it is I was worried sick? I was on a few tours around town in my school, and just so you know my school is like the freaking same size as the town. No excuses, I was worried tell me next time. Roswa said while hugging Issei. I know what I can do to make you happy. Issei asked. Hmm. Let me sleep with you tonight. Roswa said. Well what? Aren't you worried about the mating season thing? Issei exclaimed. No I trust you and even if you do lose control I am technically your mate Roswa said blushing. Hi Issei said defeated. He then went up to bed carrying Roswiss and laid down. Roswiss went to sleep immediately and used Issei as a pillow, but Issei then thought. Why do I feel like something big is going to happen? Because wherever you go something big happens. Hey I thought I told you not to listen to my thoughts. Issei said in his mind. I can't help it I'm in your mind. Yeah, yeah sure. It's true. Sure good night. Thanks for watching this video. If you really enjoy this video, like subscribe and comment down below and turn on that bell notification. Don't forget to support and follow the BLUEDOG1029 for writing that awesome fanfic and also make sure to comment on this story link in the description. See you in the next video. Goodbye.